Hey guys, welcome back. Well, this is a video I've been meaning to make ever since Stellarium came out with their new version, version 23. A lot of us who use off-axis guiders have noticed that the settings we had and that worked well with the version prior to version 23 don't work and produce the wrong field of view for version 23 for our off-axis guider. And I just wanted to go through that. Many of you, I'm sure, have sorted this out already. There are a couple of other things that we can talk about in terms of guide camera orientation within the OAG and so on. So let's get started. Mostly, we want to spend a little time talking about how Stellarium presents and asks you, the user, to enter data into the Oculars tab in order to account for where the stalk is or where the prism is relative to the center of axis of the telescope. Now, prior to version 23, what Stellarium had us do was to find the bottom edge of the sensor, if the sensor is smaller than the size of the prism, or the bottom edge of the prism, if for some reason the sensor size is larger than the prism, and we'd put that in as the prism CCD distance. Now, with version 23, they've changed that. And so what they're doing instead is measuring from the center of the optical view, so right down the center line of the telescope up to the center of the prism. Now, that's actually a better way to do it, except that we already had a way of doing it, and we all, for the most part, understood what that was. So changing something midstream is a bit irritating. Another thing that I want to take on while we're here talking about off-axis guider is what about the orientation of the camera within the off-axis guider? Stellarium can represent two different fields of view, one with the sensor, the long axis of the sensor aligned with the axis of the telescope, and the other with the short axis of the sensor aligned with the telescope. And there are pros and cons with both of those approaches, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But mostly, for those of us using large focal length systems and looking at targets with very few guide stars available, Having an accurate off-axis guide review is essential if you want to do some pre-planning before you go outside and know or have at least very high confidence that a guide star is going to be visible for that particular target on that particular night. Using my settings that I've had and have been using recently, this is what my field of view would look like before version 23 was introduced. Prism CCD distance is what we're mainly interested in here. And so what this is, is the distance from the scope axis up to the bottom of the sensor. Again, if the sensor is smaller than the prism height. And for me, I, based on some earlier measurements I had taken, this number was 11.55 millimeters, and this is what I got. So I have my sensor here for my imaging sensor. That's the ASI-294MM in this case. And then we have the sensor, the ASI-174 Mini that I'm using for the guide scope for this SCT configuration. And then what we're putting in are the numbers that allow it to come up with the 7.1 millimeters in height here and the 11.3 millimeters in width here and then we're putting in the information to uh, tell it where to put the bottom edge of that sensor and that's basically what these three numbers here are doing and when you get your numbers dialed in your field of view up here the stars in the field of view look like what you're getting from phd2 now if you take these settings and just download version 23 the new version of stellarium this is what happens you can see that now all of a sudden this circle here, this inner circle, the bottom of the prism appears to have dropped down from here down to here. And now these two stars are in your field of view, if this were the correct field of view, whereas here they are in the previous version field of view, which is correct, by the way. So what's going on here? It turns out all we have to do is change this number because now Stellarium is measuring this prism CCD distance from the center of the field of view up to the center of the prism, or in other words, the sensor. To make the modification from pre-version 23 up to version 23, we'll just take our old number that we had in the prism CCD distance and add on half the sensor height that we have here, or 7.1 divided by 2 if you're using the ASI 174, and then we come up with 15.1 millimeters. And now if we enter that in, to Stellarium version 23, we have 15.1, and now we have 15.1 here. I haven't changed anything else over here. And you can see that now this is looking similar to what we had before. So this will now replicate the view through our PhD2, and we can use version 23 for planning. But just for a side-by-side -side comparison, Note that here's what we had before version 23 with the correct parameters, and now with the corrected parameters with version 23, we have this view, and you can see it's identical, same guide stars, et cetera. So 
That's all you have to do. Where do we get those measurements from? How do we measure it? Because what is Stellarium is asking us to do is to measure from a center of a view, of our field of view of our telescope, which there's nothing to hold on here with a pair of calipers, up to a center of the prism, and there's nothing to hold on up there either. So how do you get a good measurement of that? The one thing you can do is pull out your trusty, hopefully not dusty, calipers. This is probably one of the most uh, useful tools in our arsenal as astrophotographers. And then just go over to your alpha axis guider and measure this diameter here, and then measure from the bottom of the prism down to the bottom of this opening here. Then we can come up with this distance between the center of the optical axis and the center of the prism. Let's go over and take a look at the measurements I made with my Celestron alpha axis guider. So here's my Celestron off axis scanner. I've got it taken off the telescope. This is obviously the telescope side. Here's the camera. So that's the camera side. We have the flat portion of the prism here pointing towards the telescope. And the two measurements we need here are the interior dimension across this area here and then the dimension from below up to the bottom of the prism. And so what I'm going to do here is take my pair of calipers and try to measure across the width here. So the inner diameter is what I'm after and something like, which is about 73 millimeters. And then I'm going to take this set screw and make sure it's not protruding up here and we'll measure underneath the prism for the second measurement. And I have 45.5 millimeters there. So now we'll go back to Stellarium, do some calculations, and enter the numbers in. So we came up with 73 millimeters across the diameter and about 45.5 millimeters going from the bottom of the opening up to the bottom of the prism. Now that still doesn't give us this number here, but it's an easy matter to do some simple math here and come up with that number. All we have to do is to recognize that our prism, at least for this Celestron off-axis guider, is 12.5 millimeters by 12.5 millimeters. And so we have the measurement to the bottom of this edge here, and now we just need to add on half of 12.5 to get us to the center line of the prism. Now, in order to come up with the other numbers, we have the 45.5, which is the distance from the bottom of the opening to the bottom edge of our prism, minus 73.2, which is the radius of that opening. So that subtracts off the radius from here, and now we have the distance. These two numbers here give us the distance from the center of the optical axis up to the bottom edge of the prism and now we just add on the 12.5 divided by 2 to get us to the center line and you can see that i'm adjusting my prism ccd distance from 15.1 to 15.25 assuming that the short side of the guide camera sensor is aligned with the axis of the scope this is what it would look like if you could see the reflection of the sensor in the prism and we would have the, the long dimension of the sensor perpendicular to the axis of the telescope and in that case you have here the prism ccd CCD height. That's the sensor dimension that's parallel to the axis of the scope. And the prism CCD width, that's the dimension of the sensor that is perpendicular to the axis of the scope. And of course, these you would just pull off, in my case, from ZWO or whoever manufactures your guide camera. You can figure out what the sensor dimensions are, usually from the manufacturer. Obviously, we pull out the 12.5 from Celestron and their off-axis guider information. And then that's all the information we need to enter into here to make the view I currently have compatible with version 23. What about orientation of the guide camera within the camera holder on the off-axis guider? There are kind of two ways you can do this that Stellarium can represent in its ocular section. We can have the long axis of the sensor parallel to the axis of the telescope, or we can have the short side of the sensor parallel to the axis of the telescope, which is the way I have mine set up, but it's not necessarily the way that I would like to have it set up. There's some pluses and minuses, advantages and disadvantages of the two methods, so let's talk a little bit about that. In the case like I have mine set up currently, I have the short side of the camera sensor, the guide camera sensor, oriented parallel with the axis of the telescope. And as a result, I get this annular region here to find guide stars. Now, this works fairly well. You can see where its view is relative to the view of the ASI 294. Key thing to keep in mind here is this circle here is the bottom edge of the sensor, not the bottom edge of the stalk, not the bottom edge of the prism. So it might look like I have no encroachment of that stalk on my field of view with my ASI 294, but that's not quite 
true. Uh, the bottom of the prism is actually down here. We'll take a look at that in a second. So there can be some shadowing. Now, a little bit of shadowing is okay because flats can take care of that. But if you're actually just full on blocking light, that's a bad deal. And you definitely want to avoid that. The key things about this orientation, that is with the short side of the sensor parallel to the axis of the telescope, you're generally going to get fewer guide stars with this orientation, or at least have access to fewer guide stars with this orientation, because you're taking the width of the sensor here and made it this distance here. So you, what you'd like to do is to maximize this donut area. On the other hand, it does give you a little bit more leeway to move the stalk up and still get full illumination of your sensor at the top while avoiding shadowing or blocking light of your imaging sensor. Let's go over and take a look at what happens when we swap these two numbers. In other words, we rotate the camera, the guide camera, by 90 degrees. Now we get something that looks like this. The key thing to see here and the key advantage to placing the long axis of the guide sensor parallel to the axis of the telescope is you're sweeping out a much larger area here and therefore have a higher probability of finding a guide star. The one thing you want to be careful of, and by the way, this is why I had to switch my orientation, I found that I was actually not getting illumination up here at the top of the sensor. There was the edge, perhaps, of the central tube in my SCT that was blocking light from reaching the uh, this part of the sensor. Now, one way to deal with that is to bring the stalk down and bring the prism down, but the problem there is I would start to encroach in on my imaging sensor, and I didn't want to do that too much. So rather than fight that battle, I rotated my guide camera 90 degrees, and so that's why I have the short side parallel with the axis of the telescope, and then the long side goes across this way. But I'm giving up all of this great area that I could be using to find a guide star. One way to check where the prism actually is is to go down here and temporarily rarely type in the, the dimensions of the prism. And now you can see this is where our prism actually is relative to the sensor. I'm not going to get any encroachment when I'm in this orientation, but the whole advantage of Celestron's off-axis guider is that you can freely rotate guide camera around relative to the imaging sensor. So if I had to come over here and pick up guide stars over here on this corner, you can see that that 12.5 millimeter side would be tilted this way and I could very likely be getting shadowing, if not outright blockage of the light. Now, once if I'm able to find guide stars by rotating the off-axis guider 90 degrees, I could put it on this side and just get away with just a tiny little bit of blocking here. So this is the one thing you might want to do if type in the dimensions of your sensor here that you're using for your imaging sensor, then play around with this number up here, the Prism CCD distance, and find out a happy medium of where you think you can put this and not get too much blocking with your uh, imaging sensor. Obviously, that's going to be a bit more challenging with, an, with a larger frame camera, an APS-C or a full frame sensor. That's going to be getting a bit more challenging, but it might give you some guidelines on where to place the, the bottom of that prism so that you can avoid, to the extent possible, blocking out light to your imaging sensor. I always hate it when software developers change the way we've been doing things just for the heck of it. Now, I do agree that the way they're entering the numbers in now for the Prism CCD distance is a better way to do it. It means you don't have to consider the actual dimensions of the guide camera in the calculation, but still having to change settings that have been working just to keep up with the new version is a bit irritating. But then, of course, you realize that Stellarium is free, and it's a pretty darn awesome piece of software, so I kind of get over that pretty quickly. Starting with version 23, the Prism CCD distance is now measured from the central axis of the scope up to the center of the off-axis guide or prism. It is easy to update your existing pre-version 23 settings, so that's not that big of a deal. If you want to verify that you're not getting shadowing on your imaging sensor, type in the dimensions of your actual prism of your off-axis guider into the prism CCD height and width, and then that will let you see the inner circle where that prism can be in all orientations of the prism, and then you can judge from that whether or not you need to raise the prism. We talked a little bit about whether or not to align the long side of the guide camera sensor with the axis of the telescope or the short side of the imaging sensor with the axis of the telescope, and there are pros and cons with both. If you go with the long side aligned with the axis of the telescope, you have the maximum available number of guide stars, assuming, of course, that sensor is fully illuminated. You need to check that and verify that that's the case. It wasn't the case for me, and that's why I ended up rotating so that I have the short side of the guide sensor aligned with the telescope, which is reduces my area of available guide stars, but it allows me to get the prism down a little farther so that I can, A, illuminate the entire sensor, 
and B, have access to better shaped guide stars uh, closer to the center axis of my SCT. If you're using a telescope with a focal length less than 1,000 millimeters, there's probably no need to worry about the view that you're getting out of your off-axis guider. For example, I use a off-axis guider with my 700 millimeter refractor, and I never even pay attention to the guide stars and what the field of view is in that because there's always guide stars. It's only when you're taking pictures of some targets, typically galaxies, and you're shooting at focal lengths probably closer to 2,000 millimeters that you want to think a little bit more about where the guide stars are and how bright they are. I tend to rely on uh, nothing less than a, a, a magnitude 11 guide star. I found that those work okay. If I drop off stars that are fainter than magnitude 11, then it's really limiting on where those stars are, and you need to pay very close attention to the field of view that you're actually getting with your off-axis guider so that you can plan ahead before you go outside because that's a pain in the neck to find guide stars when you're already outside and set up. That's all I've got for today, guys. I'm just going to sit around here and wait for some more clear skies and get back outside and start imaging. Talk to you later. Take care.